Great Dane Explain. This is Great Dane Explain, and today I'm going to give you the most up to date information on all things regarding voter fraud, voter irregularities, whatever you want to call it. Now, why am I doing this, little old me? Oh, because the mainstream media will not. They refuse to. To them, it does not exist. Of course, CNN's not going to talk about it. MSNBC's not going to talk about it. But now, even the right wing Fox News is pulling stunts like this. Position is clear. We want to protect the franchise of the American people. We want an honest, accurate, lawful count. Sounds good. We want maximum sunlight. We want maximum transparency. All right. I can't wait to we hear what she says every here. every legal vote to be counted, and we want every illegal vote to whoa, be counted. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I, I just think we have to be very clear. And she's charging uh, the other wait, side of welcoming fraud and welcoming illegal voting. Unless she has Who's more this details jackass? to back that up. I can't in good countenance continue showing you this. I want to make sure that- Hey, I was trying to listen to her. That up. But that's an explosive charge to make that the other side is effectively rigging and cheating. Unbelievable. Uh, if she does bring proof of that, of course, we'll take you back. So far, she has started saying right at the outset, welcoming fraud, welcoming illegal voting. Not so fast. Not so fast. Neil Cavuto, you suck. So this is why it's up to people like me and up to people like you to get the word out there because these guys won't. Oh, they'll talk about a fantastical Russian conspiracy for three and a half years with no proof that gets proven false in the court of law. But hey, we can't listen to the White House press secretary. So here I am. First things first, this is a sworn affidavit. It's court record. This person's willing to go under oath at the risk of perjuring themselves and going to jail if they lie. All right. I've already read through these, so I'll try to point out the highlights. My name is Jesse Jacob, adult citizen, state of Michigan, city of Detroit. Let's scroll down a little. I processed absentee ballot packages to be sent to voters while I worked at the election headquarters in September 2020 along 70 to 80 other poll workers. Not that kind of poll worker. I was instructed by my supervisor to adjust the mailing date of these absentee ballot packages to be dated earlier than they were actually sent. The supervisor was making announcements for all workers to engage in this practice. Well, that's just great. I observed on a daily basis City of Detroit election workers and employees coaching and trying to coach voters to vote for Joe Biden and the Democratic Party. I witnessed these workers and employees encouraging voters to do a straight Democrat ballot. I witnessed these election workers and employees going over to voting booths with voters in order to watch them vote and coach them for whom to vote. Wow. I was specifically instructed by my supervisor not to ask for a driver's license or any photo ID when a person was trying to vote. Hmm, I wonder why. I observed a large number of people who came to the satellite location to vote in person but they had already applied for an absentee ballot. These people were allowed to vote in person and were not required to return the mailed absentee ballot or sign an affidavit that the voter lost the mailed absentee ballot, AKA they were able to vote twice. So they showed up in person and voted even though they already had received an absentee ballot. And when they came in person, they did not have to show ID. They voted twice. The QVF system, that's where they store all the voters' information, date of birth, name, etc. This system can be accessed and edited by any election processor with the proper credentials in the state of Michigan at any time and from any location with internet access. Wow, really secure, real tight ship you're running up there in Michigan. I then reported to work at the TCF Center on November 4th, 2020 at 8.30 a.m. to process ballots. I was instructed not to validate any ballots and not to look for any deficiencies in the ballots. Unbelievable. But hey, can't talk about this on mainstream news. This isn't evidence. Here's some more. This was in Detroit. I'm pretty sure that was an important city in this election. At approximately 4.30 a.m., I thought everyone was going to go home as our shift had ended. There were two men in charge of the counting, one in his 30s and one in his 50s. At approximately 4.30 a.m. on November 4th, 2020, remember right when they had paused the counting and we all went to sleep and woke up and everything had changed? The man in his 50s got on the microphone and then stated that another shipment of absentee ballots would be arriving and would have to be counted. I heard other challengers say that several vehicles with out-of-state license plates pulled up to the TCF center a little before 4.30 a.m. and unloaded boxes of ballots. At approximately 4.30 a.m., tens of thousands of ballots were brought in and placed on eight long tables. Unlike the other ballots, these boxes were brought in from the rear of the room. Oh, sneaky. 
The same procedure was performed on the ballots that arrived at approximately 4.30 a.m., but I specifically noticed that every ballot I observed was cast for Joe Biden. Wow. But hey, there's no proof. None of this matters. Nothing's going to change. Joe Biden's your winner. Just deal with it. There was no fraud. Here's another little clip from another affidavit. On November 4th, 2020, I was instructed to improperly predate the absentee ballots receive date that were not in the QVF as if they had been received on or before November 3rd. So they were receiving ballots that were postmarked after election, meaning they don't count, they're invalid. Nope, they went in and edited all the information and predated them so they could still be counted. I was told to alter the information in the system to falsely show that the absentee ballots had been received in time to be valid. I estimate that this was done to thousands of ballots. All right, now here's another one out of Michigan in the all important Wayne County. All right, let's scroll through a little bit to number 15. Every ballot was being fraudulently and manually entered into the electronic poll book QVF as having been born on January 1st, 1900. This last batch of ballots was processed in the 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. time frame. When I asked about the impossibility of each ballot having the same birthday occurring in 1900, I was told that this was the instruction that came down from Wayne County Clerk's Office. 1900. But hey, I was told, oh, that stuff about dead people voting? Ah, oh, that's fake news. Nope. It's not. You can test it online. You can look for yourself. It's legit. And now we have affidavits from eyewitnesses backing all that up. He ends it with, I was surprised and disappointed at the preponderance of dishonesty, irregularities, and fraudulent tactics at the November 3rd, 2020 election at the TCF Center. Now, this is a sworn affidavit from a GOP poll challenger and former assistant AG for Michigan. So even a former AG is willing to go on record under oath right now and talk about his experience. Now, he was a poll challenger. Half of the poll challengers are supposed to be Democrat, the other half Republican. So I'm going to put the link to this into the, in the uh, description because I don't want to make this video too long, but you can read it for yourself. Basically, they would not allow Republican poll challengers to watch the process. After Mr. Larson observed and uncovered the fraud that was taking place and had the confrontation with the supervisor, he left the counting room to consult with another attorney about the matter. It was at this point that the election officials stopped permitting any further poll challengers to enter the counting room, including Mr. Larson. Election officials never allowed Mr. Larson to re-enter the counting room to fulfill his duties as a poll challenger. So as soon as he left to get his attorney, they locked the doors and said, do not enter. Some people are saying, well, this, this is just a couple of cases. It doesn't make that big a difference. Yeah, even though they're talking about thousands, if not tens of thousands of votes. Well, here's the update as of today with what they have so far presented in the state of Michigan. And as of 4 p.m. this afternoon, 131 affidavits have been completed just in Michigan with over 2,800 incident reports that have been submitted to us since election day. Two new 131 affidavits have already been completed just in the state of Michigan. I only read you a couple here. Over 2,800 incident reports that have been submitted to us since election day. So to all the people that saying there's no evidence, there's no proof of fraud, this is all over, I think you're gonna be a little bit upset a week from now. All right, now this is an update from Rudy Giuliani and what they have in uh, Pennsylvania and Nevada so far. To have you with us, let's start with uh, Pennsylvania and how it looks there uh, for the lawsuit that you filed. Well, I would say that it's a very, very powerful lawsuit. It, it uh, demonstrates uh, already that approximately 600,000 ballots were cast without any observation by Republicans, meaning mail-in ballots. 600,000 ballots. So Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania elections are governed by the legislature, not the governor, not even the Congress. So the state legislature provided when these mail-in ballots were allowed right. that they would have to be observed by a Republican and a Democrat. And if not, they'd be an, it would be an unlawful ballot. Well, there are somewhere... All right, now I mentioned this in my last video. I think maybe the biggest mistake that they made was kicking these poll challengers out of the building. Of course, it just so happens that it was all the GOP poll challengers because the law is stating in these states that if both sides are not allowed to challenge and watch, then those ballots counted during that time are invalid. So if they're able to decipher when these poll challengers were kicked out of the room, timestamp it, and then everything else after that is no longer valid, we have a problem. 
paragraphs north of 600,000 unlawful ballots cast right. in this election. Let me, Rudy, let me, let me turn to Nevada. The, the president tweeting about a huge number, uh, calling it a cesspool of illegal votes. Uh, your, your judgment on Nevada, on Arizona tonight, uh, and then I want to go to turn to, to Georgia after you just well, I, can, I can tell you as a group, as a group, there are one, two, three, four, five, six states in which the same exact pattern took place. That is mm -hmm. so unusual that it cannot be coincidental. On the morning of the election, when the mail mail in ballots were being uh, looked at and counted, the Republican inspectors were not allowed to get near the ballots. They were put in corrals. 20 to 30 feet away Amazing. and while the counting went on they could see nothing but white envelopes being passed back and forth in other words they couldn't see the writing on the envelope yeah. that would verify the ballot and then the envelope was thrown away at that point the law is violated because the law requires that there be observation by both sides that's the only way we can protect these mail ballots from fraud. So in my last video, I talk about this Dominion software. I break down who's tied to it, how it operates, and that was causing all of these software glitches that are still being investigated. And I'm certain that more information and more fraud is going to be exposed with those machines. Today, we're talking about the human involvement. So put those two things together and ask yourself, does it look like it's possible that these things could have resulted in enough votes being altered that these states could have the incorrect outcome as of now. To me, it's looking like a yes. If these things do not take place, then we at least get a different outcome in a couple of these states, which in return would change the outcome of the election. Lastly, just a little highlight reel from the day. Let's see what this guy has to say. What's he doing? We get the boat bell outs, which means we get your boat and we separate. So, if some of these votes happen to say, like this one, Donald J. Dumb Trump, that one just don't make it towards the mail. Look at the vote balance, right. which means we one more time and we separate. So, if some of these votes happen to say, like this one, Donald J. Dumb Trump, that one just don't make it towards the mail. What a dumbass for filming himself doing that and putting it on TikTok. I'll see where that goes. But all right, guys, that's where we are at as of now. I will continue to update you with evidence of fraud, affidavits, whatever I can find, okay? Whatever I can find that looks credible. And in my opinion, anyone that's willing to put their livelihood, their well being, their reputation, and potential jail sentences on the line to go under oath. I'll count it as pretty reputable for now. This is Great Dan Explain. Subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell, like this video, comment below, and I'll keep it coming. I'll talk to you soon. Peace.